I'm shadow banning the hell out of these videos. It's absolutely hilarious. Everybody knows I'm a caveman. Everybody knows I'm an animal. Everybody knows that I'm the devil that the Bible speaks of. Let's shadow ban, mate. We must shadow ban, mate. The world knows that I'm the devil. The world knows that I'm a savage animal. Let's shadow ban. We must come together and shadow ban. The world knows I'm the devil. It's over for me. I'm no longer looked upon as being tender and delicate. Let's shadow ban, mate. The world knows now. Everybody knows. It's too late. It's over, mate. It's over, mate. Yep, the world knows that I'm the devil. <laughs> it's being translated in all languages. Devil, devil, diablo. <laughs> Shadow band. <laughs> They're waking up. They're waking up. They're waking up. Tabernacle of David is being raised up. Let's go. Let's go. They're scared. These cave beasts are scared. Okay? They're scared. I'll just tell you straight up. You don't have to like it. Hey, listen, the truth hurts. The truth hurts. What would you do if everybody knew you were an animal? Come and get your Maxine. <laughs> Let's make this. <coughs> Let's make this poison mandatory. Everybody come and get your poison. Okay? You know I'm an animal. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Everybody come and get your Maxine. It's mandatory now. Let's go. I'm getting ready to kill every damn body. You know I'm an animal. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm getting hot. I'm getting hot. Oh, gosh. Shalom. Barak Adai Yahweh. Barak Adai Yahweh Shai. Kol Halayim La Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rekakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. So I'm going to tell you a story of a video that I saw. A young woman appeared to be an Edomite. And uh, she was on there complaining. Now, listen carefully to what she said. I'm getting ready to um, imitate her. So she said, um, she, she was turned back. There's two ladies. I'm going to go into the first lady. And she said, um, she was told that she could not receive medical care. And she's five months pregnant. And she was told if she cannot get the uh, concoction, they're not going to give her medical care like prenatal treatment and all this stuff. So she was turned back. New York State is in the process of um, mandating this concoction where you cannot pick your babies up after you've delivered your babies. 
unless you get the concoction. And then a third story <laughs> that I saw, this young lady appeared to be an Edomite woman. She said she feels discriminated against. She said she feels discriminated against because she was rejected medical care because she don't have the concoction. Now, once again, you have to fear the most high. What does this remind you of? Who was rejected uh, equal treatment? Who was giving different treatment? Restrooms, colored only. Water fountains, colored only. So she was complaining, saying, this does not feel good to be treated as a second-class citizen. And she said she felt discriminated against. And she said this is oppression. Now, who was treated as second-class citizens in America? told that we were three-fifths of a man, given colored only water fountains, colored only restrooms, told to go to the back of the bus. See, you must fear the Most High, Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shai. You must fear the Most High. If we don't learn anything else, we have to learn to fear him and his name. So all these curses, let's get it. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai, Deuteronomy 30, verse 7. And the Lord, thy God, will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Exactly. So you might not know this, but contrary to popular belief, the Most High has a sense of humor. And what else did we suffer? Famine, food shortages. What do you think, why do you think all these major ships are sitting outside of the seaports. What is that going to lead to? Famine, poverty, food shortages, and what else? Thine eye shall be evil against thy brother. Whose eyes? Edomites. They know that their own people is causing this pain and suffering. High-level cavemen that wear suit and ties. So their eye is going to be evil towards his brother. Somebody post that. I think it's Deuteronomy 28 and 54. See, the red-blooded cave beast against the blue-blooded cave beast. Democratic against Republican. So all these curses are turning on those that hate us, Egyptian against Egyptian, prophesied in Isaiah 19. See how the Bible comes together? The Lord is putting all these curses upon our enemies that hate us. They're going to turn against each other. See, Brother Gabar Dama, Deuteronomy 28, verse 54, so that the men so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his bosom and towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. So these families of these Edomites are being torn apart. Somebody posts, his widow shall not weep. So even these men, even their women are tired of these animals. Somebody post that. His widow shall not weep. They're tired of these cave beasts. They're tired of these cave beasts. See? What goes around comes around. 
The caveman has planted seeds of hatred. The caveman has planted seeds of racism. The caveman has planted seeds of discrimination, poisoning us. The caveman has planted seeds of division. So division is springing forth. See? So these beastets are even tired of these animals. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. See? Job 27 and 15. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. See? Um, Joy, Sister Joy is a sister, so you can time her out. But uh, she does follow the lessons of Great Millstone. So you can time her out, but bring her back. So even their widows are tired of these animals. So all the earth is rising up against him. And if you can't see that, then you're not in the spirit. Okay? And that's what's going down. So the earth is rising up against these animals. You can't blame the earth. The earth is a what? A living spirit. There's a spirit on the earth. Shalom, beloved brother, GMS, I'm off your ice from your howdah. That brother goes hard. So the earth has a spirit in it. It's trying to heal itself. The antibodies are the spirit of truth. And it's trying to expel the virus on the earth. The Edomites. Why do you think they're shadow banning? Taking down videos. Blocking lessons. Okay? So they're trying to extend their terror on the earth. They who? Edomite supremacist terrorists. They're trying to extend their reign of terror on the earth. Edomite supremacist terrorists. But we see them now. They can no longer hide themselves. Brother Gabar Dhamma Shalom Barak Abba. First Chronicles 16 and 33. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord because he cometh to judge the earth. So these trees are trees of righteousness. Who are they? A hopeful elect. Somebody post that in Isaiah 61. I think it's verse 3. So the trees of righteousness, the sons of Jacob, the hopeful elect, we're going to clap for joy when the wicked witch of the West is taken down. Esau, Edom. So he's been exposed as the devil that the Bible speaks of. Somebody has to pay for these crimes. Somebody has to pay for these crimes. What crimes? The crimes against humanity. The crimes against life. The crimes against the children of Israel. The crimes against the Lord's apple of his eye. Somebody is going to have to pay for these crimes. What crimes? the crimes against the Lord's chosen elect, the children of Israel. Every time you approach this devil, he acts like he don't know what the hell's going on. How are you the devil and you're confused? You're killing and stealing, raping and robbing, poisoning every damn body, but you don't know what the hell is going on. It's time to stop playing. It's time to stop playing, keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. Brother Awalam Awar 144. Isaiah 14 and 21. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. So the spirit of truth is rising up against the caveman. The spirit of righteousness is rising up against these beasts. The words of living waters is rushing in to purge and purify, to purge and purify the earth and all the gross abominations 
the scourge of lies is being devoured by the fountains of living water. The floods of truth is beginning to purify the earth and all the unfaithful and all the wicked are going to die. So we're keeping it 100. The Lord is only going to save the remnant of the hopeful elect. And these other nations get ready for captivity. Okay? So when you study the tabernacle of David, all nations, all nations were subdued under the children of Israel. All nations. I got a dog that started cutting grass when the scriptures came out. Hey, listen, this word is spiritual. So this dog starts cutting grass. <coughs> All right, let's go to Numbers 23. Keeping it 100. This animal started cutting grass when the Bible comes out. Okay, let's go to Numbers 23 and 19. So this is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? I thought the son of the Most High was not in the Torah or the Old Testament. You false prophets out there, the chief of brokebacks, a hierarchy of demons and beta male simps, you've been defeated. A hierarchy of beta male simps, you've been defeated. Let's read it again. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Let's go to verse 20. Numbers 23, verse 20. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he have blessed, and I cannot reverse it. So the blessed seed on the earth is being revealed. The sons of Jacob, starting with his elect. The tabernacle of David. Leaders. Numbers 23, verse 21. He have not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither have he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord God, the Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Woo! What king? I thought the son of the Most High does not exist. The king of Israel, Yahawashai, King Solomon, came back as Yahawashai. Let's read it again, because I know there's a broke back listening in. So we're going to take our time. Let's take our time. Numbers 21, excuse me, Numbers 23, verse 21. He have not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither have he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord, his God, is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. How is the spirit of Yahawashai crying out, lifting up his voice like a trumpet, the shout of a king? Somebody post uh, Isaiah 58, verse 1. So the spirit of Yahawashai is with the mighty men of the house of David. The tabernacle of David is being raised up through the spirit and power of our king of kings, lord of lords. He's shouting aloud, crying aloud, lifting up his voice like a trumpet through the men of the house of David. I said men, not mice. Okay? These false prophets are mice, teaching lies. Let's read it again. We're going to take our time. 
Numbers 23, verse 21. Ye have not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither have ye seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. What shout of a king? That's Yahweh Shai, the son of the Most High. We just read it. You broke back, stay out of See, Isaiah 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So the shout of a king is amongst us. Somebody post uh, Matthew 28. I think it's 18. I will be with you always even unto the ends of the earth. That's the spirit of our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Yahweh Shai. There was a broke back orangutan came on my comment board one day. No, on Elder Manatazak's comment board. Talking about ain't no son of the most high. Ain't no microchip. Be quiet. Be quiet. The day of the broke back is falling. And it can't get up. Brother Awalam Awar 144. Matthew 28 verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo I am with you even unto the ends of the world. That's the truth. Remember John 14 and 6, Yahweh Shai said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So this truth is with the tabernacle of David to the ends of the world. And if you're in the spirit, the end of the world is Esau. And to take that a step further, the daughter of Babylon. See? brother, real biblical Israelites. So the king is lifting up a shout. The real biblical Israelites. Isaiah 51, verse 1. No, you got the wrong scripture, brother. That should be Isaiah 58. I know it was a mistake, but yeah, that's Isaiah 58. So when he says, I'm going to be with you, to the ends of the world, he's talking about Babylon. Somebody post that in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Why you think Yahweh Shai says, I am the way, the truth, and the life in John 14 and 6. The true prophets have been identified, and the high ranking broke back beta male sims. Their chain of command has been identified too. Who is that? In the spirit, that's the house of Saul. Ain't no microchip. His name don't matter. You can call him Yo Play Yogurt. You see? And there's another devil of the house of Saul. He called himself the chief high priest. That's Yahweh Shai you broke back. You're not the chief high priest. The king of kings and lord of lords. Yahweh Shai. So you broke back men staying down. See? Let's see what that means. I am with you to the ends of the earth that we read in uh, Matthew 28. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Shalom, Barak, Kathar, beloved brother. Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. See that? That's how the spirit of truth is with the men of the Lord. We're prophesying in the uttermost parts of the earth. America. Brother GMS Amoth, your eyes from your howder. Malachi 3, verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day. When I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son, 
that serveth him. I thought the son of the most high is not in the Old Testament. I told you the day of the chip is over. The day of the chimp is coming to an end. If you can't see that, you're not in the spirit. So he's making up his crown jewels, his elect. Those are the up and coming kings and priests on the earth. His elect. Let's read it again. So you can see spiritually the two third chimps. They're falling because they're following Esau, Edom, the devil. Let's go back to that in case I lost somebody. Stay with me. Malachi 3 and 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. See? So the men of the Lord are following the son of the Most High. Who is that? We just read it. That's Yahweh Shai. We read that. Let's go back to it. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? How does the Lord speak? He says, I have spoken by the mouth of my prophets in Luke 1 and 70. Acts, somewhere, Acts 3, somewhere around verse 19. Hosea 12 and 10. He's not speaking through bro broke back men. He's speaking. I found this on the web for Hosea 12 and 10. That shows you Esau's listening in. Cyrus just picked up my voice. So he's speaking through the house of David. His prophets. Numbers 23. Numbers 23, verse 21. He have not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither have he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord, the Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. So the spirit of Yahweh Shai is among the men of David. Numbers 23, verse 22. God brought them out of Egypt. He have, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. What's the unicorn today? What does a satellite dish look like? A global communications network. A world wide web. That's in modern times. The internet. Why do you think they're trying to shut down the internet? Facebook. Snapchat. Numbers 23, verse 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what have the Most High wrought? So those Israelite foreigners are seeing this light. They're being attracted to this wise counsel. Bible prophecy. So the Israelite foreigners around the world are being awoken to this bright light. What happens when the light come on and you're asleep? You wake up and you start squinting and blinking. That's what's happening around the world. And the caveman is scared. He's scared. So we're finding out who enslaved us, raped our women, stole our land, Kicked us out of the Holy Land. Put us in captivity. Numbers 23, verse 24. I'm going to show you why the caveman is scared. If I was a caveman, I would be scared too. I'm going to just tell you straight up. You want, okay? You want me to lie to you or tell you the truth? Brother Yahweh the Maccabees, 144, Isaiah 9 and 8. Yahweh and Maccabees 144, Isaiah 9 and 8. The Lord sent a word unto Jacob, and it have lighted upon Israel. And that includes Israelite foreigners that are calling themselves Gentiles. They look Chinese. They look Japanese. 
They look like Native Africans. They look like Amalek. They look Vietnamese. They look Arabic. You see? So we're scattered into all nations. They look like the so-called white man. But if your spirit connects with this doctrine, you're not a caveman. More than likely, you're amongst the hopeful elect. Just so you have understanding. It's not based on what you look like. It's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So we're waking up from the graves of gross darkness, wickedness, and ignorance. See, Brother GMS Amoth, your eyes from your howder. Romans 8 and 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high. See, so we're attracted to this breath of life. Why you think he says in John 10, and 27, my sheep hear my voice. So the spirit of the most high is connected to the breath through Yahweh Shai, the word. Let's read that again. Brother GMS Amoth, your ice from Yahweh. Romans 8 or 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. Who's prophesying in the last days? Rebuking these international cave bankers, excuse me, international cave bees. Who's doing that? Who told you they were gonna shut down the seaports? Who told you they were gonna lead to inflation or hyperinflation? Who told you they was gonna lock every damn body down and push the serpent's venom? Who told you? Who told you they were going to quarantine people? Use the military as a backup to help push this global agenda. Who told you that? Starting with the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. The tabernacle of David has been raised up. Who told you? Numbers 23, verse 24. Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. What is this talking about? Somebody post that I think is Deuteronomy 29. And we're going to, our enemy shall be found as liars. And we're going to tread down their high places. Who's the king of the hill right now? that exalts himself as the eagle. Where is that at? Which should tread their high places. And our enemy shall be found liars. Where is it at? Somebody help me out here. Let's keep going. We'll read that again while a brother posts that. Let me see. Somebody knows where it's at. Here we go. Here we go, right here. Brother GMS Amoth, your eyes from your howder. Deuteronomy 33, verse 29. Let's go up to verse 28. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency, and thine enemy shall be found liars. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's go up to verse 27. Same brother, GMS Amaf, your eyes from your howder. Deuteronomy 33, verse 27. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, 
and shall say, destroy them. So we're going to tread down the high places of the Edomites. So Job 9 and 24 says, the earth is given into their hands. Let's go back to that. So Judah is a lion's whelp, a young lion. That means we are a easy prey. How can Simba defend himself against these laughing, wicked-ass hyenas without Mufasa, without the spirit and breath of the Most High? See? So we became a prey to all the beasts of the field, starting with these cave beasts. Brother GMS, I'm off your eyes from your howder. Isaiah 5, verse 29. Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. Yea, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe and none shall deliver. So the caveman is going to become a prey. Okay? We got next, Lord willing. And we're going to tread down the high places. Right now, the caveman is beating his monkey chest as the king of the hill. But he's getting ready to fall. Why? Because the tabernacle of David is being raised up. That's why. Let's go back to that. Numbers 23, verse 24. Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. So we're going to tread down their wicked high places where they drink children's blood and rape children, beat out the backs of these young young boys. How many watched that um, video clip by brother um, Yawakanan? Okay? Uh, uh, is an Edomite pastor was raping a young 10-year-old boy. So we're going to tread down the high places of these international cave beasts. They're going to fall. And we're going to wash our feet in the blood of the wicked. Pursuant to um, Psalms 58 and 10. We're not going to show the caveman no mercy. Why? Because he showed us no mercy. That's why. Somebody post that in uh, James. He that have shown no mercy shall receive no mercy. I think it's James 2 and 13 if I'm not mistaken. Did the caveman show us mercy? They so-called ended slavery and instituted Jim Crow laws, still beating our backs in, raping our women. A lot of tears are walking around. What is that? Chocolate or caramel or vanilla covered Edomites. They look like Israelites, but they're cave beasts. Their forefathers go back to the slave masters that raped our women. I'm going to show you. We're not going to show the caveman any mercy. I'm getting ready to show you. I know I broke back out there. It's like, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. Okay, let's see. I know there's a broke back listening in. Let's see. Brother Gabar Dama, James 2 and 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that have shown no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Somebody post Psalms 89 and 15. See, I don't mind slaying broke back men. They're part of the problem. Okay, I'm going to thrust this sword of truth into your abdomen and twist it. You see, we learn in the military, when you thrust with the sword or the bayonet, you twist and make sure that broke back don't come back or try to repel and fight against you. I'm going to slay you broke back men with the sword of faith and truth. Let's go. Let's go. Where is that in the Psalms 89? The Lord rejoiceth at judgment. Let's read that again, because somewhere there's a chimp. That's too hard. That's too hard on him. Okay, let's read it again. Brother Andre serving you, Shai. James 2 and 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that have showed no mercy. And mercy rejoice against judgment. See? So the tabernacle of David, of the men, are being raised up. Brother Suave Show, don't recognize you, but I like your scripture. Brother Suave Show, Psalms 89 and 14. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth go before thy face. So those 
of the enlightened ones, the Lord's anointed, are being raised up that are providing a light unto the world. See, Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Psalms 89 and 15. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. What is the light of the Lord's countenance? This bright light of words of wisdom. The full true gospel. Somebody remember the story I was out about a week ago. This Ethiopian man. He said, you have a light on your face. What is your name? What is it you do? Where are you from? This man was from Ethiopia. So this truth puts a light glow of countenance on your face. The word. I mean, this is heavy. I'm getting hot. Hey, listen, if you don't get aroused by this truth, you're not really in the truth. There's a little bit of broke back in you. I'm just telling you, don't get mad. But if you don't get aroused by this word, there's a little bit of broke back in you. But you can work that out of your system. If you search the scriptures daily and study the word and follow these lessons, you can work that out of your system and repent and be purged and become a new creature, washed by the word of truth. Let's keep going. Let's go. Let's go. Numbers 23 and 24. Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. That's why these international bankers are scared. They study Bible prophecy on the left-hand side. See? So this truth brings about the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So why the Yahweh Shai says, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. He's talking about the spirit of truth. Let's go to John 16 and 12. The book of John, chapter 16, verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. So he's speaking to the apostles. He who? Yahweh Shai. John 16 and 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Who speak in all truth? The men that Yahweh Shai is with. That's why we started off in Numbers 23. Let's go back to it. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? See, why? Because he is the spirit of truth. Brother Gabar Dhamma, John 14 and 6. Yahweh Shai saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. See? See that? That's why he says in Matthew 28 and 19. I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Let's go back to John 16 and 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Who told you the caveman was going to lock every damn body down? Use the military as the backdrop to apply pressure. Shut down the economy. Make it where you can't buy or sell unless you get the witch's brew. All things to come. He will teach you all things to come. Who told you the caveman is getting ready to come with a digital device? Look up the new human infrastructure bill. 
that comes with a digital ID. Hey, listen, anybody not talking about the technology and the MOTB need to stand down. That's not a man of the Lord. John 16 and 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. See? Somebody posted, I think it's Isaiah 42 and 19. That I have declared new things. <laughs> John 16 and 14. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive a mind and shall show it unto you. So we have a spiritual eye, vision, to foresee the future, prophesy, which means to say before. We can only do that through power. So we have the power of the breath of life. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. John 16 and 15. All things know we got partial truth. All things know we know some of the truth. All things that the Father have are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. Let's go to John 16 and 26. So the men of the Lord can foresee all things as it relates to Bible prophecy. See, Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. There it is. Isaiah 42, verse 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Is Yahweh Shai dropping down right now with a bullhorn? Is the Most High sending you an Instagram text message? Uh, FaceTime? No, he's speaking through the men of the Lord, which are his mouthpiece. John 16 and 15. All things that the Father have are mine. Therefore saith I, that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. Let's go to John 16 and 26. At that day, ye shall ask in my name, and I shall not. I'm excited. His name does matter. There's still false prophets teaching that his name don't matter. John 16 and 26 again. At that day, ye shall ask in my name, and I, and I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you. So his name does matter. Let's go to John, John 16 and 32. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. Wait a minute. Who was scattered? Into all nations. Cut off from our heritage. Cut off from the words of truth. See that? Let's read that again. John 16 and 32. Behold. The hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. So we were scattered between 65 and 70 A.D. Scattered into all nations. John 16 and 32. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we have to go through Jacob's trouble. That's great tribulation. See that? Anybody teaching there's no Jacob's trouble, you need to stand down. Put a pacifier in your mouth and be quiet. We just read it that we got to go through tribulation. My goodness. Let's go to John 17 and 6. So we're keeping it 100. We're teaching the truth, the full truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. John 17 and 6. I have manifested 
thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. No, we lost the doctrine, and we don't know the truth anymore. We're just teaching a partial 10% truth, GMO truth, watered down gospel. Let's teach it again. You fake prophets are finished. And his name does matter. We read it again, broke backs. Be quiet. John 17, verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. Mm. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. So we have the mind of Yahweh Shai. Somebody post that. I think it's 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. Somewhere in there. We have the mind of Yahweh Shai. So we are an extension of Yahweh Shai. He is the right arm of the Lord or the right hand. The tabernacle of David are the what? His sword or the battle axe. So we're in the hand of the Lord through Yahweh Shai. Make sense? So we are the battle axe or the sword of the Lord bringing forth this word. Yup, brother Amaf, your eyes from Yahweh. Amos 3 or 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So we have the truth. No, the broke back truth. We have the truth. No, Sodom and Gomorrah truth. We have the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Let's go back to John 17, verse 7. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. John 17 and 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. This is why I started off in Numbers 23. Read verse 19 and then jump to verse 21. So we have received the breath of life from the king of kings, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, through the son of the most high. See, that's the breath of the most high, through the word made flesh, his image, the son of the most high. Let's go to John 17 and 25. O oh, righteous father, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. That's why I started off in Numbers 23. So we know the Father through his image, the Son of the Most High. See? That's the word. So we know the Father through the Son, the mediator, the chief high priest. That high ranking broke back out of Sakari is not the chief high priest, okay? He's not. The chief high priest is Melchizedek or Malak Tazadak, Yahweh Shai. Number 17, excuse me, John 17 and 25. O righteous Father, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Beautiful. Let's go to John 17, verse 26. So the world hate the light. The world hate the sons of light. Those are the elect men of Jacob, the house of David. Why? Because the world dwell in gross darkness. That's why the world hate us. Because we are emanating the full true gospel. The light of wisdom. The lamp unto our feet. The guiding light which lights our path 
towards the path of salvation, the narrow, straight path that enters and leads into the gates of the kingdom of heaven, rulership, immortality. Second chapter six and nine says, for Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. So right now we're in hell on earth, but we're going to enter into the kingdom through great tribulation. You think the caveman is just going to turn over and lay down and roll over like a drunken prom queen? The caveman is not going to just roll over like a drunken prom queen and give you the kingdom. He's going to fight tooth and nail. Ah, you see, become a straight savage. Why you think woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea? For the devil has come down. <laughs> hey, man, I can just see this devil fighting and scratching and clawing and gnawing, trying to stay in rulership. You see, <laughs> he done shut down the damn ports. This man is like, hey, listen, if you know I'm an animal, nobody can eat. Shut this bitch down. <laughs> it's over, devil. It's over. It's over. You see? Though the waves roar, though, <laughs> though the waves roar and toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though the sea roar, toss, and turn, you cannot overcome the beach or the sands of the sea. That's Israel. When you read uh, Jeremiah chapter 5, Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will you not tremble at my presence? You see, that stretched the heavens and the curtains of the earth, that laid the foundations of the earth. Who was the foundation of the earth? The chief cornerstone, Yahweh Shai, followed by the men of the tabernacle of David. You see that? So though the rays roared and tossed themselves, they could not prevail. So this devil is clawing and gnawing and scratching and biting. Woe into the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the cake man has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. He knows. The cake man knows. The cake man knows. The hell with you if you think he don't know. He knows. He knows. Why you think he's shutting down the damn seaports? If you, if you know I'm the devil, nobody can eat. Nobody, I'm going to starve you, MFs. <laughs> I'm going to starve all you, MFs. You know I'm the devil. <laughs> you know I'm the devil. <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Oh, pray for me. Let's go to John 15 and 3. Damn it, I'm white, damn it, I'm white, damn it. John 15 and 3. So we're being washed by the word. We're being set up to inherit the kingdom of heaven, a righteous, holy kingdom. Holy means separate, purified, made white as snow, cleansed. The Most High is not going to let you in the kingdom, and you've been rolling around in the damn pig's pen with slop and mud. So you can't return back into the pig's pen. That's the gross abominations of this world. Once you get washed by the word, you can't be a dog return back to your vomit. So you got to be washed by the word and stay ingrained in the word. This is our safe house, our refuge. Let's go into it. John 15 and 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. Wait a minute. What do we abide in? A pavilion. The house of David, the tabernacle of David, that's the chief of the elect. So you have the, it's built on the cornerstone of your Shai. Then you got the elect of the elect, that's the house of David. Apostles, elders, prophets, teachers, followed by the remnant of the hopeful elect. So we're abiding under this umbrella of truth. This is our safe haven. Our refuge from lies and the doctrine of the cave man, followed by broke back two third wicked Israel sims. Let's go back into it. So you can't return back to the pig's pen. This world, we got to take our time. We got to take our time. 
John 15 and 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. See that? So this word is our place of comfort. So when you look at this, if you've ever looked at a vineyard, sometimes you'll see, you'll see like little um, constructs built to protect the vineyard. So we're abiding in the house of the Lord, which starts with coming to this wisdom. So what happens to a, um, uh, what happens to a vine? If it's cut off from its root, if it's cut off from the source of its life, cut off from the waters that flow into it. Let's read it again. John 15 and 4. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. So the fruit will fall off and die. And the branches, if it's cut off from its life source, it's going to die and wither away. So this word is the breath of life, the fountains of living water, which, and the physical incarnation of truth, wisdom, and life is the word made flesh, Yahweh Shai. John 15 and 5. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. You're supposed to be feeding the flock, by the way. So if you got the fountains of living waters, you're supposed to share those waters and this breath of life. If you're not feeding the flock or the sheep, the Most High is going to punish you for that. That's why the Bible says, will a man rob God? John 15 and 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So if you're a broke back sitting on the sideline, not feeding the flock, not spending out this money and charity and investing it into the minds of the hopeful elect, then you're going to be found wanting. You're going to come up short in layman's terms. We used to say in North Carolina, you're going to mess with me and mess around and come up short. So if you're not feeding the flock, you're not investing this wise treasure, this counsel of truth into the minds of the hopeful elect, you're going to be found wanting and you're going to come up short. I'm speaking in Ebonics. See, let's go back to verse 5, John 15 and 5. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. So the goal of teaching is to help raise up teachers through the word of preaching. That's the goal. I can care less about a million followers. How many teachers are amongst these followers? And most importantly, how many are amongst the hopeful elect? That's the end state. How many of those numbers are amongst the hopeful elect? I don't care about big numbers. Neither does the most high. John 15 and 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. Men gathered them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. That's the harvest, the end of the world. And that fire is going to come by nuclear missiles, followed by laser and chariot fire from the so-called UFOs. So the caveman is scared. He's scared. John 15 and 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And we read previously, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, it shall be given unto you. 
John 15 and 8. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. We teach others so that others may teach others also, and that the remnant of the hopeful elect may be gathered by the word. That's the goal. John 15 and 13. John 15 and 13. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So starting with Yahweh Shai, he made the ultimate sacrifice for the hopeful elect of Israel. What are the men of the Lord doing? Going out to the highways and byways, putting ourselves in harm's way, rebuking the devil, rebuking wicked Israelites, laying down our lives for the hopeful elect and of the remnant of the house of Jacob, starting with the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, have been making their bodies a living sacrifice. Many of the men of the Lord have lost their wives, but these wicked Eves are going to be in great peril because if your husband is still alive and you go and hook up with another man, that's adultery. So good luck, wicked Eve. Okay, you're going to deep throat a missile. You're going to get deep throated by a large water hose or a nuclear missile. You've been warned. You can't say you didn't know. You've been warned. Okay, you probably never deep throated a missile, but it's coming. You done left your husband for a damn devil. See, Brother GMS, take heed, Israel. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Holy, that means clean by the word, not still being wicked, talking about you saved. You bugged out of your damn mind. We're not saved till Yahweh Shai comes back. How are you saved and the K-Man can still put his foot in your ass? How is that saving you waddling like a duck with the K-Man's boot in your ass? Is that saved? No, that's not saved. That's sodomized. <laughs> that's not saved. That's sodomized by the devil. <laughs> you waddling like a duck. With the caveman's boot in your ass. Talk about, I'm saved. I'm saved by Jeebus. <laughs> Most high is going to kill two-thirds of you bugged out Israelites. I'm saved by Jeebus. Okay, we'll see. John 15 and 13. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you. If ye do whatsoever I command you. So we're commanded to go out to the highways and byways. And be instant in season and out of season. To teach the word to the remnant of the hopeful elect of the house of Jacob. False religion have bugged a lot of Israelites out. They're bugged out of their damn mind. And they got demon spirits attached to them. The moment you come up to me, I know if you got spirits on you. I already know. The moment you come up to me. So we're friends if we abide in this house. Do what we're commanded. And teach and preach. And not take your hands off the plow. It's cold outside. It's cold, or you still supposed to go out. It's hot. Well, you still got to go out. John 15 and 15. See, watch this. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. That's the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. What does he mean? I call you friends. We've been reconciled back. Unto the covenant. The brotherhood. The fraternity. Of truth. That's the marriage contract. 
So look up the word reconciliation. So we've been reconciled back to the covenant by taking heed unto the word. So this word is the book of the commandments of life. So we're reconciled back. John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. So the name carries power. Words carry power. Why do you think when people say, I cast a spell unto you? What spells? Words. There's right hand side curses, left hand side curses. Right now you're being enchanted. You see, he's whispering unto you, smooth talking unto you through the word. So you're being enchanted back unto the marriage. That's the word. I spell this truth, the word. So this is a right-hand side enchantment going on. Falling in love with our first love, our husband men. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. He is married unto us. Us who? The captive daughter of Zion. See? So the husband goes out and chooses his bride. In the ancient world, you went out and said, look, you coming with me. You see, alpha males. If I want you, I'm going to come grab your arm. You coming home with me. That's how it went down. So he chose his bride. The, the woman don't choose the man. Now, in the land of brokebacks, everything's confusion in Sodom and Gomorrah. But the way it's supposed to go down, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, chooses his calmly and delicate woman, his bride. Let's read it again. John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye should love one another. We show love by teaching, by preaching, by sharing the gospel. And what? Obedience. Obedience. And fear the Lord our power. That's how we show love. Can your woman go out and sleep with five different men and come home and say, I love you? Hells to the nizzle, to the nizzle, to the big no, to the no. You can't go out and commit spiritual fornication and then talk about you love the Lord. And if loving the Lord is wrong, heh, I don't want to be right and wicked as hell. No, you're going to tell your woman, there's the door, there's the door, there's the door. And don't let the door hit you on your way out. But I love you. <laughs> See? So love is obedience. And with a men, we're all about respect. The moment we feel disrespected, we don't feel love. I don't care how good the loving is. If we feel disrespected, we don't feel love. That's how us, it is with us men. Hint, hint. Door stomp. I mean, foot stomp. John 15 and 17. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore the world hateth you. So everybody, this word, this truth is not for everybody. It's not. It's only for a small remnant, a small sanctuary of the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Let's close out here. John 14 and 23. John 14 and 23. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, 
and my father will love him and come unto him and make our abode with him. That's coming into the house of the Lord, his pavilion. You can't say you love the Lord and you're committing spiritual fornication, adultery. Your woman don't love you if she's sleeping around with different false gods, false idols, in bed with false worships, going around the world to Asia, Africa, the Middle East, Central America, South Africa, then coming back to my, I love you. I love you. Yeah, okay. Let's see how long that lasts. John 14 and 24. He that loveth me. John 14 and 24. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. So the marriage contract starts and is processed through the father. He determines who's invited to the wedding, the father. And he extends that wedding invitation through the mediator, the husband men, Yahweh Shai. Let's close out John 14 and 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So we're coming back to the covenant, the words of promise. We're coming back to this wise counsel. We're coming back to the marriage contract, repenting, making ourselves a living sacrifice, being humble of a contrite spirit, feeling sorrowful for the incursions that we committed to breach our marriage contract, to break his commandments. Everything is being called back into remembrance. When we went off, why we went off, how did we fall as a people? Why did we go into slavery? Let's read it again. John 14 and 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's why we're able to prophesy and break down these scriptures. The Holy Spirit, John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So the spirit of truth make us confident and bold and trusting in the word. We're being what? Comforted. We're giving a what? A peace of mind. Peace of mind. Wisdom and knowledge is the stability of our times. John 14 and 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, my Father is greater than I. So Jeebus Cross is not God, okay, that's bogged out. They're two separate spirits, and his name is not Jeebus Cross, the golden retriever. His name is Yahweh Shai, and his father's name is Yahweh. He's of and from the Most High. Yahweh means he is or he exists. Yahweh Shai means he will deliver, deliverer or savior. He's Hebrew and spoke Hebrew. So hopefully this has been edifying. And the title, the title of today's lesson, keeping it 100, keeping it 100. <laughs> uh, I've been in rare form today. So we try to give you raw honey. GMO honey, false doctrine is not good for you. We want the truth, the pure honey, the full truth, and nothing but the truth. Not watered down caveman doctrine or lies taught by brokebacks. We want the full loaf of bread. So hopefully this has been edifying. 
DTA, a bot, ba bop. We got next, Lord Willing, Barack Obama, Kwame Yasharala, and a bot, ba bop. Shalom. K man is scared. Love you. A shadow band in these lessons, so I recommend you figure out how to record them on your own device. They took down one channel. Some of you remember Faithful Servant of Yahweh. Over 1,000 videos the K-Man swallowed up because he's scared. So hopefully you're figuring out how to share all these lessons from the men of the Lord. Starting with the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone and the men of valor and the brothers teaching a likewise true, full, doctrinal truth. Shalom.